Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This is me, Dr. Sam, and today we are going to discuss about endodontic diagnosis. So not only is this important for just the students who are uh, applying for the exam or preparing for the exam, INBD exam or even the endodontic exam, but it is also going to help all the dentists because definitely when you see the chart or the mind map that I am going to draw, it will be much easier for you to classify the diagnosis based on the purple and the periapical areas and it also serves to uh, add in your notes the information that you identify for the patient so as to prevent any kind of uh, future legal situations if at all that happens so let's get started with our topic of endodontic diagnosis so our endodontic diagnosis basically needs certain tests. And what kind of tests do we do? We do certain percussion, palpation, probing, mobility, and cold tests. And these basically tell us about the vitality of the teeth in concern. So these endodontic diagnosis can be divided into two types mainly, okay? And how do we divide them into two types? One type is based on the vitality test and the other type is based on the radiographic evaluations. Okay, so the one which is based on the vitality is the pulpal diagnosis and the one which is based on the radiographic aspects or the x-rays is the apical diagnosis. Now, in both situations, you know, when you test for endodontically affected teeth, Sometimes patients come in with a whole area which is sensitive and they are unable to identify the specific tooth. So you would identify multiple teeth and while you're checking, some of them may be normal, some of them might not be normal and may need some treatment. So in normal situations of pulpal diagnosis, apical diagnosis, you know, you don't see any changes in the radiographs and nor do you see any pulpal changes. That's when you have normal situation. Now the pulpal diagnosis can be divided into further more types and which are these types? So the first type in the pulpal diagnosis is reversible pulpitis, okay? The second type is going to be irreversible pulpitis. The third type is going to be necrotic pulp and the fourth type is basically treatment based I just put it in here because it's like if the tooth is previously treated or the tooth is initiated with treatment. In both of these cases, you would need to finish the treatment or refer them to the endodontist to complete the treatment, right? What happens in reversible pulpitis? Basically, reversible pulpitis is seen where, you know, there's evidence of certain amount of inflammation and this inflammation may or may not resolve on its own. And this kind of inflammation is usually seen, you know, after there are really deep fillings which are closer, very close to the pulp, or sometimes when there are uh, buildups and crown traps. And what are the signs that you would see from the patient or what, what are the symptoms that you would see from the patient would be that the patient has some form of cold sensitivity. Now the cold sensitivity could be either because the filling is not appropriately bonded or the other main thing would be a reversible pulpitis because of these deep areas, very close to the nerve and the nerve is activated. So in this kind of situations, you always have to check these teeth at the recare visit, at the six months recare visit. Now, at the recare visit, either the sensitivity can still be present or the sensitivity might be absent, right? If at this recare visit, the sensitivity is still present, that means it is not reversible pulpitis anymore. It's getting into towards irreversible pulpitis. If it is still hurting, the pain is probably going to increase and it's going to go towards irreversible pulpitis. But what if this sensitivity is absent after these six months or at the six months visit, if this kind of sensitivity is absent, then what happens that time? What happens is there are two situations that can happen. Either the nerve tissue has already healed or the other situation, which is the nerve has died or there is necrotic nerve. 
and in in case of a necrotic nerve again you would have to do some form of root canal treatment okay necrotic pulp now let's go to the next one which is irreversible pulpitis okay what happens in irreversible pulpitis you see some form of tissue changes either there is swelling or there is some percussion or palpation may be positive right now irreversible pulpitis is also categorized in two types one is symptomatic and the other one is asymptomatic okay now symptomatic is the one where the nerve uh, the, sorry the sensitivity in the nerve area is still present after reversible pulpitis it becomes symptomatic it's irreversible symptomatic symptomatic irreversible pulpitis now when this is asymptomatic when do you see the asymptomatic you will see that asymptomatic situation when there is chronic deep caries the caries has been there for a very long time the patient has no idea about it that's when you get asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis okay and necrotic pulp is basically where you know the pulp is dead so obviously it's going to need root canal treatment in this previously treated the pulp is no more there in initiated partial pulp may be there or most of the pulp may be uh, taken out but in all these cases you would need root canal treatment to be completed okay now let's see what happens in the apical diagnosis okay in the apical diagnosis as i said this is based on the radiographic images or the radiographic findings so what happens here the apical diagnosis as as i first said it could be normal there would be no changes so it's just normal no root canal treatment is needed when there are no changes obviously you just let it be now the first type that i'm going to discuss for the apical diagnosis is condensing ostitis okay now condensing ostitis is basically you know when whenever there is a low grade infection in the tooth area and the pulp reacts by forming or the body reacts by forming a radio opaque lesion in the periapex that's called as condensing osteitis but condensing osteitis does not need root canal treatment please remember this this does not need root canal treatment now the other things that we need to consider or the other types of apical diagnosis for endodontic conditions are again classified into two types okay and the two types are mainly the apical abscess and then the other one is apical periodontitis yes apical periodontitis is a part of periodontitis okay it is a form of endodontic diagnosis so what happens in an apical abscess okay abscess as the name suggests it it is going to be a big swelling right so again apical abscess can be classified into two types one is acute and one is chronic when it is acute apical abscess there is spontaneous pain there is percussion there is swelling and also you can see that irregular margin on the periapical area on the tooth Irre irregular you know broken margin of the uh, abscess around the tooth root now what happens in the chronic in a chronic situation you will not see um spontaneous pain percussion may or may not be positive swelling might not be present and radiographically you will rather see a draining sinus tract that is the landmark diagnosis for chronic that's like the landmark for chronic apical abscess a sinus tract Okay. Now let's see what happens in apical periodontitis. Okay. In that, again, there are two types. One is symptomatic and second one is asymptomatic. What happens in symptomatic apical periodontitis? In symptomatic apical periodontitis, again, the tooth is tender to percussion, widening of the PDL space. Okay? And what happens in asymptomatic? Asymptomatic there are no symptoms patient has no idea asymptomatic periapical lesions may be seen in you know deep caries areas also because there'll be a cyst or a granuloma but what is the landmark situation in asymptomatic periodontal uh, periodontitis apical periodontitis is that it may have a cyst or a granuloma basically a periapical lesion at the root apex okay so two different things this tells you about the pulpal condition and the vitality and is based on the vitality of the tooth and this tells you about the radiographic condition of the tooth and when you write down your diagnosis 
always mention a pulpal diagnosis and the apical diagnosis whether it is in your exams or it is in your regular clinic notes it will definitely help you just in case if there are any kind of uh, medical legal situations all right i hope all of you remember these um, and i hope this helps you this chart definitely helps me remember all of these um, situations and and of course um, i forgot to mention this all of these situations here are going to need root canal treatment so where do you not need root canal treatment you do not need root canal treatment in condensing osteitis or even when everything has healed normally you do not need anything when the nerve has healed you do not need anything but when there is acute apical abscess chronic apical abscess symptomatic apical periodontitis or asymptomatic apical periodontitis in all of those situations you need root canal treatment to be completed i hope this um, small <laughs> topic definitely helps everyone in their clinics as well as the ex exams if you have any questions please let me know i love creating these small topics um, because i feel like a lot of us uh, after graduating might forget a few of these things and it's always a good idea to come back to it if if needed take some screenshots or um, just save this video for the explanations and whenever you feel like come back to it all right my friends that's it for today i hope this topic really helps everyone in remembering some of the nitty gritties at the at in one glance rather and if you have any questions you can always let me know in the comment section below and i will be happy to answer them and i i think you can use these charts to discuss with your friends um, while you're studying endodontics and even uh, this will even help you in referring some of your cases to the endodontist when they ask you for a diagnosis all right my friends have a good day until next time adios for now